All right, we are live, and I want to welcome everyone to the Not Your Average Joe show. If you would like to learn the subtle skills of reading facial features, what our guest today calls facial analysis, if nonverbal cues, nonverbal language is something that appeals to you, then you're going to definitely want to take some notes in this upcoming interview with my special guest, Brian Galtke will be right back with you on the Not Your Average Joe Show. This is the Not Your Average Joe Show, where each week we bring you sales, marketing, and mindset strategies you need to get to your next level. And now, here's your host, international business mentor, Joe Soto. Woo, woo. We got Brian Galke on the on the show today. Welcome, Brian. Hey, thank you for having me. Yeah, I'm excited you're here, man. You got a lot of interesting things that you teach. I know that you hear that a lot. And um, you know, I a little background on you. I know you're you're a facial analysis expert. Um, I love that terminology. You cover a lot of different subject areas, from sales to customer mm -hmm. service and interpersonal communication. How do you apply this to marketing? Um, but first of all, how about a little bit of background on on you? Uh, tell us a little backstory and how you came to learn or pursue and want to teach to the world the art of subtle skills. Sure. Uh, so I'm an introvert by nature. So growing up, I love to be around people, but I was terrified of being around people at the exact same time. And so I always picked up books that I thought would help body language, how to win friends and influence people, uh, um, NLP books, mirroring, matching, you name it. And I still always chose professions where people had to come to me. I was a bouncer. I was a bartender. I was, uh, you know, I worked retail. And then what does any good introvert do? You know, you try and pick up a new book and pick up a new book. And then uh, when I got into technology, I work the help desk because everybody, once again, has to come to you, right? And so it kind of fed my needs for a really long time. And what really happened that changed my life is in 2012, or actually 2011, a friend was coming down for a trade show. And we were supposed to meet for dinner. And I get to the restaurant. She calls. She's like, hey, I'm not going to make it. I'm like, oh, here we go. And she's like, no, you need to come and meet the keynote speaker. I'm like, no, I already sat down. I have my glass of wine. I'm staying here. She's like, no, you need to come meet this guy. So, all right. So I was being stubborn and I went over and I met Mac, who's my mentor and he analyzed my face. I'm like, wait, I, I've never heard of this before. And I thought, okay, this is, this is BS. Right. And there was yeah. the table of eight people. And as he went around the table, he read something different about everybody's face. And it wasn't generic, like, oh, you've had a hard time in life, or, you know, somebody whose name starts with an M, but it was very mm -hmm. specific details. And I was hooked instantly. Um, I'm like, how, how do I learn this? And he happens to live. I live in Dallas, Texas. He lives over in Fort Worth, about 40 minutes away. And what he would do is twice a month, he would invite people in and he would do these trainings. And I can literally look and track out through my life. The minute I learned how to analyze people based on their facial features is where my life really changed. And what I tell people is what it did is it got me out of the prison of my own mind and into the present moment. Because introverts or people who are nervous to be around people, you're overthinking and you're hearing all these voices in your head, not like the crazy voices, right? But you're thinking way too much. And when you learn to analyze people's faces, you're giving them your time and attention. And because yeah. you're focusing on them and not focusing on you, it completely changes the dynamics of the situation. And I went all the way from help desk to now I'm a regional vice president of sales. And this is the number one skill that changed my life socially, romantically, business wise, mm -hmm. you name it. Learning to do this is learning really to give people your time and attention. And that's what creates relationships. Joe says nothing wrong with the crazy voices. He's and, got a lot uh, of them. In there. <laughs> he's got a lot. Yeah. Is it real? Are you a psychic? Is, is this yeah. psychic powers or is this? No, this is a practice learn skill. Learn skill. Um, that's the most important thing is this goes all the way back to Aristotle, the Greeks. What happened is they learned that there's 42 muscles in the face. The mind creates movement, movement creates muscle. And because of that, our faces are constantly altering over time. So when your parents said things like, don't make that face or it'll stick that way, there's some truth to it. 
Yeah. And what's really crazy is this yeah. used to be taught as part of normal academia. But what happened is during the Renaissance period, when Lavatour brought it back, there was also when phrenology came into uh, like the mainstream where it was taught. And phrenology is if I have a bump right here in my head, it means I'm a criminal. And it was trying to judge people. And so it said, oh, you got this bump. You're going to be a criminal. Let's go ahead and throw you in prison. So when they threw out physiognomy, face reading went with it at the exact same time. But it's oh, insane because wow. it's still taught to attorneys for jury consulting. It's yeah. taught in some business yeah. settings. It's actually out there. So if you go and Google physiognomy, it is the art of understanding people based on their facial features. And the most important part is it's not judgment. It's understanding people. So all I'm looking at is what does their eyebrow say about how they take in and process information? And here's mm. the really crazy part. Normally, if I'm talking, I'll say this is the unfair advantage that you don't know, you know, but you know it. And the people are like, well, what do you mean? And I'll say things like that are part of our everyday language. Take one on the chin. Keep a stiff upper lip. They've got a nose for this. They've got an eyes for this. They've got an ear for this. We talk about facial features every single day, but nobody's formally yeah. taught us what that meant until I met Mac, my mentor, back in 2012. Okay. So can you tell me what my eyebrows tell you? Is there, is there? Oh, absolutely. I... So you have straight eyebrows, <laughs> like, it's straight to the point. Right. And yeah. now what's interesting about yours, what's really unique about yours is see like mine are thick and then they go thin. That's because okay. I get bored and I move on easily. People who go from thin to thick, they're the people who they won't be the first one to jump on board, but when they jump in, they dive in deep and they will keep working a problem over and over. So it's not just for sales. A lot of times we'll do this for team building, team bonding, because when you learn to look yeah. at somebody else's face, you think, okay, have you ever read the book, The Five Love Languages? Yes, of course. Okay. This is no different at all. Because all it is, is how do I think, what do I want to say, but how would they best understand it? Got and it. when you're Based making the their eyebrow shape. <laughs> oh yeah, absolutely. That's <laughs> And the reason I teach eyebrows is yeah. because number one, you can see them everywhere you go, like, especially right now during the pandemic, you can still yeah. see eyes and eyebrows. Yeah. But so you can read them on is, Zoom still. Absolutely. That was one of my Zoom, questions. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, here's the number one thing that is what made this so amazing. When I used to go and do presentations, I could talk about, you know, I could in the hotel room, is my projector working? Is my PowerPoint working? You know, is my demo and everything good? But people were always the unknown. But what I can do is there's this cool thing called LinkedIn or social media and I can go and find pictures of people's faces ahead of time and think, yeah. how yeah. do I need to alter my presentation so it's best understood by them? Wow, and, just based on looking at their headshot. Oh, yeah, 100%. The headshot. Now, here's what headshots will do. It'll blur out if somebody's got lines on their face, but yeah. it's not going to blur out eyebrows. Yeah. You can still mm -hmm. see their upper lip. You can still see their eye, their eye angle, all kinds mm -hmm. of things. So, like, I can show a picture later of Steve Sims. Um, I recently went, grabbed his LinkedIn profile, and even Steve, and he's holding, of course, a, a, a glass of whiskey in his picture. But there's still so much you can see about Steve's face just from his LinkedIn profile. And here's where it's cool. You can go and do that. Like, so, for example, different settings, dating apps, people will put on their app, you know, whatever they think you want to hear, but their face doesn't change. And they post pictures yeah. of themselves. If you go to any company, let's say you're a struggling entrepreneur, and you want to go in and meet with somebody, you go to the company's About Us website, you find a picture of the people you're going to talk to, and you analyze their face. And there's two parts to it. One is people can tell when you're focusing on them versus what you want. But number two, I do this when I go to speaking events um, like Steve Sims, for example. When I went to his event, I didn't know anybody. Joe introduced me, the other Joe, Joe Ingram, introduced yeah. me to Steve Sims. And Steve's assistant, Christy, added me to the Facebook group. And so what people were saying is, oh, I can't wait to be there. I'm so excited to be there. And so what I would do is I'd just go then, take a picture of their face, and I think, okay, this person's visual, this person's auditory, this person's get straight to the point, all these different things. And when I got there, I'm not nervous networking anymore because I feel like I'm just meeting up with old friends. Yeah, so that very picture is Steve. So let me see if I – let me pop up the screen. So um, when you look at that, He's got what's called chameleon eyebrows, which is you can't see his eyebrows until he gets close. Right? Ah. But he also has high ears and low eyebrows. So he understand th understands things very quickly. Steve's mm. also got a rounded forehead. So you're so looking at the positioning of the, the ears to the eyes also. You're looking at the positioning Absolutely. of how I'm high. Absolutely. Ear height. Ear height. 
Yes. Got it. Got How, it. Ear height matters. Eyebrows matter. So if um, you go and Google lowbrow humor and highbrow humor, highbrow humor <laughs> is where somebody tells you a joke and it yeah. takes you a minute to get it. And lowbrow humor is like jackass or the three stooges where you immediately <laughs> laugh. And so when I say it's part of our everyday language, it is. We talk about it all. And that's because authors and artists used to go take courses in physiognomy in order to describe characters or draw characters for their things. So if you look at when people used to draw cartoons, we had photography. Uh, While the artists are out. all here the same, you can watch a Disney movie. Oh, am I cutting out? They are cutting out a little. Give me a put somebody put a comment yeah. in the comments if you're hearing the cutting oh, out no. or is it just me? It's okay. There, I heard you there. Okay, are you back? <laughs> or am I back? I guess should say. Okay, Justin says you're good now. Bummer. Yes, cutting out. Okay. Ah, what a shame. Um it's okay. Yeah, you're I apologize. Back. I don't know what's going on with Verizon. <laughs> um yeah, technology. So artists and authors used to take courses on how to describe it. So if you had a book back in the days, Edgar Allan Poe, you name it, there weren't photos of who your characters were. So all that they could do oh. is describe their actions. Describe their... So, dang it. Got it. Am I back? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you're, it's slightly dang. cutting out every once it when in a while. Yeah, it's okay. okay. I like that lowbrow uh, humor and highbrow humor. The Verizon... So if you Google that, that's literally what it means. So when you look at somebody's face, if their eyebrows are high, then they need time to think before they make a decision. So let's use it in a sales environment. If you have, if you're talking to somebody whose eyebrows are high away from their eye and you force oh, okay. them away to from the eye, you're not close, saying higher than their ears. You're saying higher than their eye. Got yeah. It. So the, the ears can be, are completely separate. So that's what we call clusters. That's where you're combining more than one feature, but if you look at somebody whose eyebrows are way up here yeah. when they're resting versus somebody right, whose like eyebrows that. literally right. sit on top of their eye, imagine yeah. when we're born, we're born, if we're lucky enough to be born with sight, that's the way we take in the world first. So imagine data racing down your forehead to get into your eye. Well, if your eyebrows up here, it's going to get here, it has to slow down, go over the eyebrow and then go back into the eye. So they need time to process information. But if somebody's eyebrow is literally sitting on top of their eye, then the data can race all the way down their forehead. And so it goes right in. So when you see somebody whose eyebrows are right above their eye, they understand things very fast. So get Got to the it. point, you know, quickly and stop talking. But if their eyebrows are up, you need to give those people time. So if they've got high eyebrows and you're pushing for the one call close, you may get a sale, but you'll never have a customer because they'll have buyer's remorse. They'll feel like you forced them into the sale. Crazy, huh? Got it. Yes. Yes. I love that. <laughs> I love the fact that you can do it in advance of meeting them too, in terms of prep for a sale. Absolutely. What, what, I would go uh, in with, what does the oh, slanting sorry, of the eye tell you? Sure. You, it's you the way you slanting of the eye. Do is you take a business card. Mm -hmm. and you draw from the inside of their eye to the outside and does their eye angle up if it angles up they're an optimist if okay. it angles here they're just kind of middle of the road if they <laughs> if it's angled down then they see the downside of things so people Ooh. go oh okay well, optimist versus pessimist well but yeah. pessimists anticipate problems so if i was going in yeah. to do a presentation and somebody's eyebrows or somebody's eyes angle up i'm going to talk about Here's all the benefits. Here's all the features. It's why it's the greatest product known to man. If their eyes angle down, I'm going to take yeah. the completely opposite approach. I'm yeah. going to talk about, well, we had problems with the first generation of the product. Here's what we had to do to overcome it because then I'm speaking that person's language. So if you're depending on who you're, you're pitching to or who you're presenting to, you know, do I talk about the upside of things or do I talk about the downside of things, the problems that we had to overcome? And literally, because I was analyzing people before I'd go meet with them, let's say I was 
so one of the things I do, we'd have to go and present to a panel and there was any customer that was over a million dollars. I got flown along with two other people to go present around the U S and what I would do is I would go in and look who's auditory, who's visual, who's kinesthetic. And if they have larger eyes and smaller ears, then they're mm -hmm. visual. If it's larger ears and smaller eyes in proportion to their face, then they're auditory. So for example, if okay. you ever watch the show, the okay. voice, on yeah. TV, yeah. all of those people have large ears. Yeah. Well, on the voice, what do they do? They sit with their back. If they like what they hear, then they turn around to see the person. And it right. makes perfect sense. So if somebody has large ears and smaller eyes, then I say things like, hey, does this sound like a good idea? Do you hear where I'm coming from? I say yeah. auditory phrases because yeah. I'm speaking. It's ring true for you. Yeah. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. If they're more visual, then it's, can you see where I'm coming from? Picture this, you know, mm -hmm. am I, you know, and you can keep doing it. And then if they're kinesthetic, which you can't always tell based on the face, but I'll explain some other things is if they're kinesthetic, it's, does it feel like we're on the same page? Is it something you can wrap your arms around? You talk yeah. about physical things at the exact yeah. same time. Are you, yeah. Are you able to grasp, get a sense for? hundred percent. Yeah. Good. Awesome. So, the tell us about the mouth what's the mouth tell you sure the, li the lips so, and the mouth okay I, so i love this because you're going to answer it for me if i say hey keep a stiff upper lip what does that mean um keep quiet i don't i don't yeah, know actually keep quiet yeah. don't share your emotions yeah. hey yeah you know keep if you're having a bad day, hey yeah. keep a stiff upper lip buddy you know that type thing so yeah. if you meet yeah. somebody who has a flatter upper lip Mm -hmm. Not immediately ask them personal questions because they feel like you're invading their space. Yeah. So instead, I'll talk about external things. Hey, tell me about your job. Tell me about your friends, your family, your coworkers. Once they talk about them, their personal life, then I know it's okay to ask yeah. personal questions. So if you meet somebody who has a flatter upper lip, they can they are perfectly happy if it's just a transaction, right? So if you're again in the sales process, you can yeah. sell them a product and you're good. If they have the fuller upper lip, then they okay. want you to talk about them, ask about their uh, themselves, their family, their friends, get to know them. Because if you ju just make a transactional sale, then they're going to feel like you cheated them. Oh, you're just after my money, right? Or you're just after the sale. So you can literally look at somebody's upper lip and figure out, do they like to talk about themselves or not? And that's why the number one plastic surgery right now, lip fillers. Yeah. Nobody knows, knows why, but now you know why. Yeah. Yep. So, so what, how much calibration is going in to, I have to maybe I'm looking for patterns here. In other words, the, mm -hmm. there's a combination going on. Sometimes you may prejudge and it's wrong, but you're calibrating to see if your communication and feedback resonates based on obviously the response that you're getting from them. Um, which yes. ones, which part of the face is like the one that you might miss the most or isn't as consistent as the other parts. Um, for me, it's to, ears, and the reason ears. why is ears. Yeah, um, ears because you can't always see them, right? In people's mm -hmm. pictures, especially LinkedIn and everything else, they may show one side of their face and not the other. Now, I do look yeah. for ear height in compared to um, eyes, but if I showed like a picture of most people, most women have their ears covered, so I don't put a whole lot. There is an entire like course on ears. But that's yeah. the last thing I look yeah. for. I read people like a book. I go top to bottom, left to right. So foreheads, there's three types of foreheads. There's rounded, outside the box thinker. There's yeah. flatter forehead, which yeah. is you have to imagine like a ladder coming up here where they go step by step. Or there's where the forehead is angled back. And those are people that when you throw it, data like sticks to their head. So they see something one time, they can easily repeat it. Then I go to eyebrows. Why? Because eyebrows tell me how much time do they need to make a decision? And then how do they process it? So there's three basic shapes to eyebrows. There is rounded eyebrow, thinks about the people around them first. So friends, okay. family, coworkers, themselves second. So if I met somebody, and I'll give an example. I was at, I went to a Steve Sims event, then I had to go home. And that's when Dallas had the ice storms like two months ago. And I saw the gate agent and I knew bad weather. She's going to have a hard time. Well, I was trying to get on an earlier flight on standby and I was like eighth on the list. And I walked up to her and she had rounded eyebrows. So I know she thinks about her coworkers and everybody first. And I said, 
it's all your coworkers' fault. The weather's here. You know, you guys control the plane. You guys control the maintenance. You guys control the weather. I can't believe you're going to do this to us all. And I made her laugh. And then I came back to her and I said, hey, look, I just want to say thank you. I know you're going to have a hard day the rest of the day. I'm trying to get on to this flight on standby. I'm on the eight o'clock flight. Um, if I can get on here, that'd be awesome. Not only did I make it onto the three o'clock flight, guess who got bumped to first class? Hmm. Nice. Her like a person. Yeah. Okay. So for fun, let's read. This is yes. John Travolta. Try to find right. a picture where you can see the ears and the eyes. So his, his ears are sitting yeah. almost level to the eyes. His eyes are slanted right. slightly down, I think, right? They are slightly, but look at how large his ears are. So even though you can't see the ears all the way, see they're very yeah. large and he's got kind of smaller eyes, right? So he's more yeah. auditory first. So you explain why he could sing so good in Greece. Exactly. <laughs> or why he's always associated with music and everything. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, then eyebrows very close to the eye. So he understands things very fast. Now, what I can guarantee you, it's not going to be in this picture, but if he was to raise his eyebrows up, he would have what's called Einstein lines, which are right across here that's deep intense study you see that on a lot of actors because they're constantly having to memorize scripts right got it um smaller eyes that are, are a little more recessed so even though he's a famous actor he doesn't want to be front and center right he's yeah. always sitting back and evaluating yeah. and i actually saw him where he was a a guest on a different speaker's plot uh, stage and he kind of sat back a little bit he didn't want to be the center of attention mm -hmm. um flatter upper lip so doesn't necessarily like talking about himself right away. We'll talk about his career and everything else, but doesn't like a lot of personal questions. Strong jaws here. When you latch onto something, it's like a bulldog, right? So when somebody with strong jaws makes a decision, they latch in. That's what creates that strong jaw right here. Mm. And then a good strong chin. So the coolest thing about him is if I have to talk about anything negative, I don't have to use a sandwich technique. Something good, the yeah. bad news, something good again because we actually say take one on the chin right it's a boxing term yeah but what we're actually talking about is how people handle adversity whenever they have to deal with anything so if you have to talk to them about something bad you can go right to the point you don't have to dance around it got it so let's do another one yeah. here hold on one more sure real, real i love fast. this i can do this all day i know this is fun right okay stop screen okay let me go to share so we were just looking at John Travolta. Now we're going to look at Joe Ingram's. He's a fanboy of him. Hold on one second. Oh, yeah. Here we go. There we are. Mr. Handsome himself. Now, you can't see the ears line because he's turned, he's till he's turned here. Exactly. Right? Right. Yeah. But there's still a lot that you can see. So, for example, and you can't see my uh, my line I'm looking here. So he has what's called so a brow ridge. So when you see that ridge Pitt, right above the eyes. We're listening to the audio. We're listening to Brad. We're watching Brad. Pitt, oh, yes. Sorry. For people are listening to audio. So in the area where you see his eyebrows, it's kind of a thicker area. That's what's known as a brow ridge. So that's somebody who likes to understand every step of the process so they can reverse engineer it. And so if you're talking to somebody who has that brow ridge, you have to go step one, step two, step three, step four. If you jump from one to four, they're going to go, whoa, whoa, what happened to two and three? Okay. okay. Then you go to eyebrows are, are straight eyebrows. They're close to his eyes. So straight eyebrows get straight to the point. Don't waste my time. Yeah. Um, then you look at, he's actually got what's called forced focus lines. And that are the lines right here in between the um, eyebrows, kind of going towards the nose. You see that on a lot of actors also because they have to memorize the scripts. If you're dealing with a person that has two, and it, it, I can't tell if it's one or if it's two, but if it's one, and Joe Ingram has this, speaking of Joe, Joe has what's called a freight train line, which is the horizontal or the vertical line here that goes across. And what that is, is that is get, I'm sorry, it's a freight train line, which is either get on board with me or get out of my way. So if you see somebody who has that, once they make up their mind, you have to let them run with their idea. If you try and talk them out of it, they're just going to run you over. But what you do is you go with them, right, while they're doing it. Yeah. And then you can adjust and you can steer a train when you're on it. But you can't do anything if you stand in front of a train. So that's what's called the freight train line. So what do you um, do when someone has the mustache and you can't read the lip correctly? Uh, funny you say that. 
I tell people all the time, the best, the smartest thing you can do is trim this part of your mustache so that we can see your upper lip. Even if you don't really have one. Yeah. Because people are left, they don't know how to interact with you. So that's actually how my first conversation with Steve Sims. When we were on Joe's show, he yeah. was at the end. I'm like, hey, Steve, if you really want to kind of like win over some more people, you need to trim this up so that people can see your personal life. Of course, Steve's answer was, do you think I care? Yeah, right. Okay, <laughs> great. And, and I had, so I also, you said, Justin says, read Joe, read me. Um, yeah. <laughs> but he, he wasn't here earlier. Um, yeah. When you were reading the, uh, the my, eye, my straight eyebrows, um, however, thin to large um, versus large to thin. Correct. What about, uh, the nose yes. or flaring of the nostrils? Sure. Does, so does nostrils are pretty interesting because if I said, absolutely not the foot, well, the flaring is people trying to take in uh, oxygen, usually before a fight or something like that. Yeah. But if I tell yeah. people, Hey, take a deep up, uh, take a deep breath. Most people go through their nose. And yeah. so when you look at somebody's nostrils, they will actually tell you how do they approach things in life. So larger rounded nostrils are more wrist tears because they can get more oxygen in there. And so when you see somebody with large nostrils, you know that they're willing to take on a lot. When you see somebody that has smaller, thinner nostrils, yeah, it's like they're thinking, oh crap, I don't have enough air to share. So they're always thinking in terms of scarcity. So if you're talking to somebody that has, I call them coin slot nostrils, where it literally looks like you put a coin in there, like an old arcade game, because they're yeah. so thin, then you know you can't talk about a lot of abundance type things. More of how do you help them get over their scarcity first and then expand? Because that's the way that their mind thinks. It's crazy. Um, some people, people have a little more crow's feet than others. Is some our faces have more... change over time? So what? We're... Okay. Sorry, we were delayed there. Sorry, I just realized. What's that? We were delayed a little on the audio. I think. Sorry. Okay, so as, let me ask you about the crow's feet oh as we're getting close so to time today. here. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we're, we're having trouble with audio. Give me one second. Um, let me try it. Let me see if there's anything else I can kill here. I don't know what. Yeah, we were, we're on a delayed audio mix. Well, this has been fat. While you're figuring that out, this has been <laughs> fascinating stuff. I think everybody would agree. Give me a thumbs up if you agree. This is, this is fun stuff. Thanks, Alec. Alexander, oh, look at, look at Alex is here from overseas. Appreciate you guys. Okay. You're back. All right. Sorry about back. The, yeah, no, this is yeah. great. So, so, uh, you know, I, I've studied a lot of NLP and, um, mm -hmm. you know, I'm a master practitioner in NLP and I'm a trainer's training with Richard Bandler. Um, little background you may mm -hmm. not, may not have been aware of, however, and thoroughly, uh, you know, trained in strategies and, V VAK and, and all that. However, uh, in all of that training, and I've had a lot of it, I've probably, I've had more NLP training than most people that I've ever met. I, you don't hear the facial analysis stuff. So I love this, the complimentary, right. complimentary supplemental, uh, facial feature reading skill set that you're bringing to this, that, I think can enhance people's NLP knowledge and, and take it to another level when they're working with people, because this has been fascinating. Uh, how do people find out more about you, Brian? Where, where do you uh, want to Everywhere. Go? I'm sure I'm subtle skills everywhere. So, so subtle skills.com this week, the new website will be launching. Um, yeah. You can also, that's where I am on Instagram uh, there. When you go to the website, you can download the cheat sheet on the three different types of eyebrows that everybody nice. has. And again, I teach eyebrows first because eyebrows lead to eye contact. Yeah. And that's what so you're really always looking at the eyebrows. hundred percent. Well, it, because like you said, uh, I'm NLP trained as well. So mirroring yeah. and matching, right. But yeah. the problem is so many people know about mirroring and matching that they're always watching you waiting to see, are you going to cross your arms? Cause I crossed my arms and, but nobody knows about facial features. Now the cool thing about it also is when I'm looking at your face, I'm looking at you, in the face, right? If I'm reading your body language, I'm looking down. Yeah. And that's the big thing. So if you're familiar with Brian Bogart and some other people, they talk about what are the four human needs, physical mm -hmm. safety, emotional safety, three and four is they need to feel seen and heard. And then they need to feel connected. Face yeah. reading yeah. answers three and four hands down because I'm giving you my time and attention in the day and age where <laughs> this gets more people's attention than anything else. 
when you're focused on analyzing people's facial features. Yeah. And let's let me give you the, the basic, most simple answer. All you have to think is what type of eyebrows do they have? And just rounded, because I think about the people around them, straight eyebrows get straight to the point or angled eyebrows like I have. What's my angle? Help me understand it so I can help other people. If yeah. you just think for two seconds, what shape are their eyebrows? People know that you're paying attention to them and it creates a whole new connection with people. And then to your point with being NLP trained, well, then you start looking at auditory, visual and kinesthetic learners yeah. based on ear ratio, eye ratio, some other things as well. Yeah, great. Fascinating stuff. I can see how this can help people, not just in sales and marketing, business, communication, but also in their marriage and their parenting. Um, have you taught this to families? To oh, yeah. have you done couples training? I, I think you had a you have a program on your site for <laughs> yes. couples for marriage enhancement, huh? Yeah, it's uh, called looking for yeah looking, looking for, for love and all the wrong faces dot com is the website. <laughs> yeah. Looking for love and, uh, and all the wrong yeah, faces. So I get I hired that. out by <laughs> yeah. Um, I'll get hired out by companies to come in and kind of as an, an, not so much do the training, but as a unique experience for them when they go to president's club and things, I'll go and sit up and I'll actually analyze faces to teach them about each other in terms of coworkers. So how do I work for companies are obviously I can teach it to people, team building, team bonding, sales, customer service, but then I'll yeah. come in also and I'll sit down and I'll analyze somebody's face and then they learn how to appreciate their customers even better. Yeah right? Got it. So it's just completely it. different on how it's done. Yeah. Unfortunately, people are doing a lot of work on their faces. You know, yes. people are using Botox. They can't, they can't adjust the shape. They, they can adjust the shape of their eyebrow. They can't adjust how, how the height is to their ears though. There's a lot of things you can't change. Correct. Heidi said, 100%. what if they done eyebrow, eyebrow work? You so have to go, eyebrow, you have to calibrate the other pieces of the face. I think if that's the case. You do. Now here's what's interesting. If they have eyebrow work done, it's not like you go in and you have straight eyebrows and the person doing your microblading goes, oh, I'm going to give you angled eyebrows. All they do is enhance what's already there. Now, here's what's interesting. There are There is a subset of women who go in and completely shave off their eyebrows and they have them drawn in or tattooed in. Tattooed, then yeah. you're choosing what you want to portray to the world. Nice. Okay. So go with what, the, what they're choosing. Yeah. Because yes, at a subconscious so level, I that's an investment or something. Absolutely. So I, my daughter just turned five and we had face painters at her birthday party. Right. And what was mm -hmm. interesting is as soon as she had her face painted, she did a tiger. She started running around going raw. Right. Women do the same thing. They choose what they want their face to display. Right. It, am I going to wear red lipstick to draw attention to my lips? Am I going to do big eyeshadow to draw attention to my eyes? Am I going to get my lashes done? So women are actually Earrings. putting out more to the world. Guys have yeah. beards, right? Yeah. And that's why in the movie 300, they had those huge beards because how do you handle adversity? Take one on the chin. They had those huge beards because it was 300 against thousands of people. So yeah. there's all these little tips yeah. and tricks that you learn about. Yeah, terrific. Um, you also have, for the people watching on live stream, you have a QR code. Um, oh, yes. And I had that pulled up. Let me see if I can... I'm not sure if it'll well, let me share this thing. Let me see if I can share this. It's big. If not, um, I can pop it up. Yeah. Do you want to pop it up and I'll make you, I'll, I'll just try to make it. Sure. Hold on. Yeah. Let me see if I well, can hang share on. it. I think I might be able to find it here. I had it opened window. There we go. There we go. Look at this. Whoa. Let me come back. Boom. How's that? <laughs> so there anybody watching it can take a photo of this, scan it. And that'll right. take them to some links that you would like to, you get. So you got a lot of free stuff available for people to be able to access yeah. and other programs they can take a look at. So that'll help. So scan the QR code, go to subtleskills.com, check out Brian. This has been awesome. And I, I bet uh, we took a vote. Everyone hundred percent would say they'd love to see you back on here sometime again. And we'll dive more into Absolutely. maybe we'll a cat category page. specific. Yeah. I Absolutely. could go all day about, learning how to about use this for sales. Like, you know, Joe Ingram also uh, would probably agree with that. So I'm going to stop sh sharing there. Brian, this has been awesome, man. You've been a great guest. Thanks for letting me, you know, put you, yeah, we had no prep for this. You didn't know what we we're going right. to do. And here I am throwing celebrity faces at you and, and asking you to read my face and you handled it um, superbly. And I think everybody here 
can see on display your subtle skills and that they also can learn this. This is learnable skills. This isn't something that magically falls out of the sky. You apply yourself, you practice it, you learn it. Thanks so much. Everybody, this is the Not Your Average Joe show. And I brought somebody who definitely isn't your average Joe here in Brian. And I can't wait to have him back again. I'll see you guys next time on the show. See everyone. See you, Brian. Tune in next week for the Not Your Average Joe Show with international business mentor Joe Soto.